A's in Oakland, nearly identical yeah, record. The Giants lead the NL West, A second in the AL West. Bottom first, no score, two on two out. Jermaine Dye hitting 167, but he delivers there. Eric Burns and Scott Hatterberg score. It's 2 nothing A's. Bottom five, two to one A's. Miguel Tejada up and out. Two run shot for the reigning AL MVP. He's got three in his last four games, 13 on the season. It's four to one A's. Top six, same score. Barry Bonds up. In the left with Billy McMillan. Where is it? I, I can't find it. Where, where is it? Eric Chavez is right here. Take another look at it. Chavez has come all the way from third base to make the catch. And McMillan, like, good looking out, dude. Top eight, five, two A's. It's Barry. Being Barry. And that's what they pay their money to see in Oakland. Well, that and an A's win. Number 20 for Barry, but the A's take it 5 3. That's only 14 miles by car from Pac Bell to Never. <laughs> Top four, Garrett Anderson, not Louie, facing Hideo Nomo. Garrett Anderson batting 364 in his last 16 games coming into this one. Tenth home run this month, 17th this season, 2-1. Bottom four, Jared Washburn against Brian Jordan, not crossing Jordan. Adam Kennedy. Oh, his glove does it good. Sean Green's bat does it even better. Sean, not to be confused with Lauren or Tom Green. Taking Jared Washburn deep to center. Washburn's allowed 18 homers this year, one fewer than all of last season. Dodgers went deep four times. Brian Jordan off Washburn, who's been tagged for nine home runs in his last three games. Jordy's sixth, and it's Dodgers 5-2. And then who you bringing in, Eric? God, yay. It's Darren Erstad to fly out to center. Gagne, major league leading 28th save, 36th in a row going to last season. 5-2, L.A. Some six Subway Series meetings in 10 days happened at Shea on Friday night. Andy Pettit and the Yanks meeting the Mets. Short road trip for the Yanks. They can take the train from Yankee Stadium to Shea Stadium. You just take the four train south to Grand Central, then the seven train out to Shea, or you can just catch a cab. But that never works for me at night. I don't know why. Seventh regular season Subway Series. Fans getting off the seven train there. Bottom first, no score. Jeremy Burnett's facing Andy Pettit. Burnett looks at, looks at a called third strike. Has some words for home plate umpire Ron Culpa, who throws him out when he gets back to the dugout. Burnett said, what did I do? Comes out to plead his case, but he's done. Better in the inning. Base is loaded. Pettit facing Vance Wilson. Over to third. Robin Ventura. Mega the play, and Pettit out of trouble. Top three, no score. Alfonso Soriano facing Steve Traxel. Oh, out of there. Solo shot for Soriano, his 19th. And the Yankees with a one nothing lead. Next batter, Derek Jeter. He says, you know what? I think I'll have the same thing. Back-to-back -to -back homers for the Yankees. Number four for Jeter. Says he loves playing in big games, and playing the Mets is a big game. After that, both teams playing some D. Bottom third, Joe McEwing batting. Jason Giambi doing the work in the field. Top five, Soriano up again. That's deep. But look at Shinjo. I don't know how to say, give me some glove in Japanese, but I wish I did. Steve Traxel's digging it. Take another look at it. Shinjo able to take the home run away from Soriano. Still 2-0 Yankees. Bottom five. Two-zip Yankees. Cliff Floyd facing Pettit with two men on. He pops it up. Robin Ventura got enough room. Pettit out of the jam. Gave up just five hits to seven innings. And Ventura got a shower in the process, but he was not deterred. Top nine. 3-0 Yankees. Jason Giambi. That is way out of there. Two-run shot for Giambi. is 19th. Yanks win it 5-0. Sixth shutout for them this season. Fourth time it's happened to the Mets. Chicago at Chicago. Sammy hosting on June 20th. A day that he's hit more home runs than any other eight. So you can save the cork jokes. Sean Estes. First inning is no laughing matter. If you're a Cubs fan, he walks Jose Valentin and Frank Thomas. Gave up an RBI single to Maglio Ordonez. Walked Joe Creedy. Then walked Aaron Rowan. That scores Thomas. And then with the bases and the count full, Estes gives up the grand slam to Miguel Olivo. The number eight hitter, rookie catcher with his first granny in his first Cubs White Sox game. Estes gone after a 52 pitch first in his club down six. Down eight one in the second. John Garland suffering from Estes itis. Walks Mark Guzalonic to load the sacks, but former Cubs first round draft pick strikes out Alex Gonzalez to end the threat. Top four Ordonia is at the plate with Big Hurt on first. The pop to Sammy's part of the field, and here comes the sun, and I say it's not all right if you're so-so. The fallen star, 
loses the ball in our nearest star. Dusty said afterwards, even x-ray glasses wouldn't have helped Sammy battle the sun. And sign, sign. Everywhere's a sign. Two batters later, another bad sign for Sammy. Creedy's ball is heading his way, and oh, he's lost that gloving feeling. He trapped that. A four-run fourth and a 12-1 lead. Sosa at the stick. Wasn't much better than Sosa in the field. 0 for 4 with a walk. Sammy declined comment after the game. 12-3, White Sox. The Show Me Showdown, Royals and Cardinals from St. Louis, bottom four. Mike Matheny facing Jose Lima. Over to Joe Randa. His throw to first. No. Randa, two errors in the game. He didn't have one in 75 games. Next batter is Bo Hart. And Randa. Is, uh, not this time, Bo. Able to make the play to end the inning. Top five, Matt Morris facing Raul Ibanez. Base is loaded, and Ibanez making the most of his opportunity. Everybody's coming home. And the Royals with a 4 0 lead. Top seven, some trouble for Jeff Facero. Slow rolling down the first baseline. Watch Michael Tucker. Runs through Facero, his glove, his hat, the ball, everything. Facero would be okay. Next batter. Angel Barreau with a man on, and Facero wasn't okay after that. Two-run shot for Barreau, his eighth of the year. That made it 9-3, and the Royals going to win it 10-4. Cincinnati playing at Arizona Friday. Scott Williamson facing Tony Womack to lead off the inning in the bottom of the ninth. Womack had homered and doubled earlier, so he walks, and he's on first. Williamson tries to pick him off, and, well, that gets by Sean Casey, and Womack's feet are faster than Casey's. All the way to third. Same at bat and the wild pitch. Womack scores the tying run without a hit. Bob Boone, breakfast not agreeing with him. Bartender, shot a Sintron. 3 2 pitch. In the air, right field. The Diamondbacks have won the game. Oh, the Reds getting some of their own medicine. It's usually them winning in the final AB. D bat, 6 5. Tigers and Rockies, well, because baseball had to fill out the schedule. Mike Maroth on pace to set a record that places him in the bottom of the record books. You see, the guys with the most losses before the All-Star break. Maroth, 11 losses entering Friday night's game. Bottom four, Detroit leading 4-3. Maroth pitching to Jay Payton with two outs. Gets him. His only strikeout, six innings of work, two earned runs, 72 pitches. Gave up nine hits. Bottom eight, Detroit up 6-3. Chris Sperling to Chris Steins. Warren Morris with a nice play. And they complete the 4-6-3 DP. What do you know? The Tigers win it 7-5. Seattle at San Diego. Mariners have won their last seven road series, going 19-2 in their last 21 games. They're at the former park known as Kaminsky. And then they went to uh, the Jake and then over to the Motor City and hopefully caught a Nugent concert. Had some Arthur Bryant ribs in Kansas City. Minnesota swept the Twins. Over to Philadelphia for a cheesesteak and a 3 nothing series sweep of the Phillies and then to Shea Stadium where they took two out of three. Their pitching staff leads a major with nine shutouts and they're up three nothing in the bottom of the ninth. Bases loaded two outs and Jeff Nelson walks Ryan Klesko. Gary Matthews scores. He beat out an infield single. It's three one and then the next batter Rondell White entered the game 0 for 12 with the bases loaded. It's the first Padre walk off since Steve Finley in 98. Nelly's third blow and save five three. O's and Braves, I'm not sure what the connection is there, but they did play Friday night. Greg Maddox entered Friday's game, leading the majors 15 career wins in interleague play. Top first, he hits Melvin Moore. Fastball high and inside. Maddox, five and two-thirds of no-hit ball. Moore like, ouch. He would later leave the game. He came into the game, leading the AL and batting at 361. X-rays were negative. He's day-to-day. -day. Bottom four, still no score. Robert Fick says, oh, yes, there is. Four-nothing. Grand slam for Fick. Third of his career, he was two for three, five RBI, and the one run right there. Ninth inning, John Smoltz in after losing his first game since May 29th of last year. Gets Brooke Fordyce to ground out in the game. Braves win it 6-3, Smoltz. Smoltz with his 27th save of the season. Frank Robinson's gonna come out and say, try and shake things up. Toronto's won eight and nine, and well, Montreal, they've lost six of their last seven, so. Robbie says, hey, we need to fix this box here because I think he's standing too far back. And Paul Emmel shows Hudson where he can stand, and then Hudson, well, that's double trouble. And between innings, they, they remark the batter's box, so Robbie doesn't have to worry about it. This is what he needs to worry about. Hudson in the sixth, a 
Javier Vasquez. Two run homer and his eight, 18th big fly surrendered by Vasquez. That ties in for the second most in the NL. It's 5-1. Bottom eight, Andy Chavez to right. Frank Catalanato, oh, he needed a, oh, he needed a bigger mitt or a better angle. That ball's rolling and so is Chavez. He must be wearing his PF flyers. It's all about posture foundation. Delgado to Myers, not in time. Chavez gets the inside the Parker, but the Blue Jays get the 8-4 win. Hey, Minnesota is right next to Wisconsin, so I guess that makes the Twins and Brewers a rivalry. Brad Radke with a start. He can get some help from his outfield. Bottom first, no score. Radke facing Scott Podsednik. Jock Jones runs right out of the picture, but he caught the ball. Bottom second, still no score. Radke facing Wes Elms. Runner on third and one out. Dustin Moore with a sliding catch over and right. Jenkins, Jeff Jenkins held to third. As for center field, Torrey Hunter, well, he had a big catch the last time it was Miller time for him. Remember this? All-Star Game 2002 in Milwaukee. And Hunter robs Barry Bonds of a home run. Barry didn't like that. Back to Friday. 2-2, bottom of the seventh. Radke facing Wes Helms. Oh, and here comes Torrey again. Give me some glove. Almost the same place. Take another look at it. Helms will get nothing and like it. Bottom eight, still tied to two. Troy Hawkins facing Keith Ginter. That's deep. Jock Jones, another great catch. Take another look and listen. No way that didn't hurt. Bottom 10, still tied to two. Royce Clayton on third. Juan Rincon bounces one, but A.J. Brzezinski able to make the blocks. Clayton says out. Just stay right here. Next pitch. Well, Brzezinski's not going to get that one. Clayton coming home. He's in there. And the Brewers take it 3-2 in 10. Tampa Bay at Florida. While being in Florida, we go top nine. Game tied at one. Rocco Baldelli against Braden Looper. And we get you the Sports Center strike zone so you can see where that pitch was. No Quez Tech. Called strike three, Lou Pinella not happy. By the way, D-Ray shortstop Ray Ordonez could miss the remainder of the season with a torn knee ligament. Lou's going to tear a blood vessel here pretty soon after the Sports Center strike zone again shows that that pitch to Aubrey Huff may have been inside. So Pinella gets tossed by home plate umpire Chris Guccione. Bench coach John McLaren also tossed. Huff was also sent. Then bottom 11 tied Miguel Cabrera. Hit the center. Ball Deli. Major league debut for Cabrera, who was 0, 0 for 4 before that. And give him the initiation. Marlins win three. Pittsburgh, and well, this guy got a good deal on popcorn. He was going to need it. This was a six hour like plus game. Bottom 14, third. game tied at four. Aramis Ramirez with two on, no out. It's sharp. It's Danny it's sharp. Baez. McDonald. Oh, glove me two times. Glove me twice on this play. Oh, six, four, three. Bottom 15, Baez. Nothing earned in his last 12 appearances, only five hits. Simon says, walk off. Randall Simon over the center field wall. 5-4 Pirates and 15. Uh, they've won five of six. All told, a couple dozen games of suspension and an undisclosed amount of fines handed out after Friday's bench-clearing brawls between the Reds, Phillies, Pirates, and D-Rays. Dunn, Adam, negotiated his suspension down to two games, began serving it Friday night. Silva had been scheduled to start Friday, and Casey next Tuesday. Reds also mixed it up with the Cubs. Judgment not yet handed down for their WWE routine. Pitchers Kyle Farnsworth and Paul Wilson were featured on Thursday's main event. Looks like the decision went to Farnsworth. Both teams blame the other side. They play again in a couple months. Astros and Rangers, one team gets the boot, the other gets the boot. Alex Rodriguez in the lineup after taking that ball to the nose in Thursday's game. What, you didn't see it? Well, here it is. Trying to apply the tag, ball pops up, ah, right in his grill. Bottom eight of this game, Rangers down 5-2, and A-Rod hits Octavio Dotel in the face. Number 18 of the year for A-Rod, he was two for four, pair of RBI. Astros still up 5-3, though. Top nine, 6-3 Houston, bases loaded for Jeff Bagwell, and he's standing up there like he's gonna do something, and he does. Brad Ausmus, Adam Everett come in to score. 8-3 Astros, seven run ninth for them. And they go on to win it by the final count, 12-3.
Well, more trouble for Jose Canseco, who's making it tough to keep up with his legal problems. Now, after a positive test for steroids, Canseco was arrested Friday at his house in Florida, where he was already under house arrest. The positive test is a violation of his probation. He was under the house arrest for an earlier violation of his probation. He also got 30 days in jail time, in addition to two years of house arrest for that. And authorities warned him that continued violations could land him in jail for up to 15 years. This ordeal started with that nightclub brawl in Miami with his brother two years ago. But Jose's rap sheet started long before that. In 1997, he was charged with battery against his second wife five years after being charged with assault by his first wife. In 1989 was especially eventful. Not only was he arrested for speeding in excess of 125 miles per hour, he also was caught on the UC San Francisco campus with a loaded 9mm handgun.